Riding into the night with my two best friends behind me was the best feeling ever. The cool, damp night pulled us in as we set off on our journey. We were a ragtag group of guys, riding a mix of cheap bikes and mountain bikes. The one thing that bound us together was a desire to escape. We all wanted to forget about the worries and the stress of school and the never-ending drama that surrounded us. Every Friday night, we would go out for a few hours. I will never forget the nights before everything got worse. We would meet on the old trestle bridge, and the captain would tell me where we were going, and I had to figure out how to get there. He was short with long, blonde hair, but he was firmly in charge. He never told us where we were going or what we would do there. Thomas was about as tall as me, and he, always, he, he was always along for the ride. He would almost always get hurt, and always found a way to make us laugh. Parker called himself the captain, and we all knew that he had issues. His wrists always had long, straight scabs running from left to right. Girls loved him, but he didn't love himself. We would get yelled at for so many things, but we stayed with him. When he fell, Thomas and I would pick him back up again. We did what we wanted, we did what he wanted, and that was it. He was our best friend. We thought that that wouldn't change. Everything changed on the night Thomas stayed home. I should have known something was wrong when he told me nothing more than her name. Usually, I would get a few nails, a few details, but not that night. He was in a bad place. I never learned what it was, what it was, but this ride wouldn't help. We set off like any other night with the best of intentions. Swerving between trucks and cars, you could feel the burning of your muscles. We were getting close when it started pouring. Pulling into the nearest mall, I was reminded why this was so fun. To keep from getting wet, we went into the nearest 7-Eleven and tied bags over our head and feet, over our head and feet as if it would help us stay dry. Looking like complete idiots, we arrived at our house. She seemed small when we first saw her, but I never connected the dots. She took us around to the playground. It was like a well-rehearsed play. He would always be with the girl, and I would go and do whatever I could. He would always yell at me for being annoying, but I wouldn't care. After a while, she took us over to a strange little area where we all sat in a row. He was next to me, and she was next to him. As the navigator, part of my role was letting the captain do his thing, so I tried my best to ignore as they texted each other. I couldn't help but feel a bit left out, but they didn't care. He told me she was a 7th grader. We, was in eighth, we were in 8th grade, so as uncomfortable as I was, I tried to ignore it. The night will forever be seared in my brain. At first, it wasn't too unusual. I would always leave him with the girl and spend time alone doing whatever I could. After two hours, he was ready to go. I had finished three full games of Snake on my phone and washed my bike a few times, but we were on our way. It was raining out when we left, and it was easy to tell something was wrong. Our entire ride home was silent. I kept asking him what is wrong and why aren't you talking, but he never answered. The cars drove by just like normal, and if anything we rode faster. I didn't know then, but that night would be the last night I could have left our group. Two days later and we were back in school. From that point on, nothing would be the same for me. Even though I swore to never tell anyone about those nights, he didn't think that applied to him. When he thought that people knew what had happened, he decided that I was the perfect scapegoat. He told everyone he knew that I was the one who hooked up with the sixth grader. Nothing I said could change that. For a few weeks, people asked me what had happened, but they wouldn't listen to the truth. He was still safe as people started to ignore me. I was optimistic that because it was only a few weeks from the end of the school year, when we got back, everything would have been forgotten. The optimism died faster than I could have imagined. When I walked into the cafeteria, it felt like every eye was watching me. I was stuck with the captain, and nothing would change for a full year. When they kept going out, 
I stopped, hoping that I could get away from it, but that never worked. I knew that he was a horrible person, and I really didn't want to be friends, but I really had no choice. Everyone said that if he was so bad, I should just leave, but they never knew how hard it was. I stopped getting calls as he found new girls to manipulate with his depression. They never listened to me either. Every single girl he talked to got roped up in the never-ending spiral. He stopped talking to me and Thomas, to me, and Thomas started to move away. By the end of freshman year, I had finally left. The rumor is still there. I'll never be able to sit in the cafeteria, and new kids are still told to stay away from me. I have new friends in an entirely different life, but they don't care. Apparently, I'm dangerous, and the people who don't move on have made it impossible for me to make new friends. The captain has forced me away from anyone I could be friends with, and I will never be able to shake the feeling that I could have done more to stop.